Well, uh, certainly uh, measurable residual disease is a very important topic. It's been going on for a long time. And uh, the issue with uh, measurable residual disease is uh, the, the techniques have improved tremendously through the years. And we have now reached and talking about uh, 10 over minus 7. And uh, earlier we were confident with minus and uh, of course, uh, the, not only the, the techniques have improved, but also the, the origin of the cells that we are uh, searching for has changed. Uh, earlier, bone marrow was the on, only um, location to look at for MRD, and later uh, imaging was introduced, and it was um, uh, published that uh, PET imaging and uh, marrow MRD are uh, complementary and both negativity are important uh, which shows uh, the lowest level of uh, disease burden after treatment. And now we are talking about uh, even a further technique which is uh, looking with mass cytometry uh, with either liquid chromatography to measure the monoclonal protein at a very sensitive level in blood. So this overcomes the, uh, the heterogeneity of the disease distribution within the body and uh, looking into the uh, blood and measuring um, the M protein uh, in a very uh, uh, high uh, sensitivity technique allows uh, uh, another uh, complementary uh, method with the bone marrow MRD. So this has also been published recently. And based on these developments, the clinical data so far, uh, I think that on my composition in the debate, I will be uh, talking and advocating that the data in the clinical trials we have so far is based on the traditional old-fashioned data. And of course, I cannot argue against the, the value of MRD as a very significantly highly important prognostic factor, maybe it's even more important than the risk assessment at diagnosis, and certainly it's an independent factor. Uh, however, um, for uh, today's uh, uh, routine daily practice, we cannot recommend uh, centers or physicians or patients to change and adapt their treatment based on the MRD achieved. For, um, there are maybe two topics that uh, deserves attention, and one is uh, the, the technique that I am talking about. Not all centers have these high sensitive level of detection methods. And uh, secondly, and the disease can be uh, very high risk. And although you achieve MRD negativity, you may uh, have a progression of disease if you stop treatment. So um, for de-escalating and uh, stopping purposes, MRD assessment cannot be useful for all patients, uh, mainly for high-risk patients. But for those um, very limited number of very good prognostic uh, patients who are very sensitive to regimens, uh, induction and transplant, some of those patients may really benefit. And if they achieve MRT negativity, even with the current uh, available techniques, they might be the, the candidates who may benefit from stopping maintenance. Today we have uh, recent data from maintenance studies and it shows that uh, on maintenance most of the, the majority of patients convert from MRD positivity to negativity within the first year. So continuing a therapy beyond a year where they no longer have a deepening of response may be questionable. But uh, it's uh, still early, and uh, finally, I would like to mention that uh, today there are more than 10 clinical trials based on uh, MRD-adapted regimens. And most of these trials are on de-escalation and stopping purposes. We do not have data 
to support the role of uh, intensifying or changing therapy based on MRD, uh, continuous MRD positivity. So there is still open space for this missing amount of data.